Hi everybody, hope you're well. This video was requested by Ellie Cooper. This is going to be an updated Skiller video. So I have done these before, but there's a few things that have changed. Just most of the things are still the same. So this is going to be the updated version of that. So I have a Skiller full here. This full was bred from 100 Blood Parents with tears, which is always key because you always want to have the most possible inborn skills that you can have and if you want to know how to breed your own skiller I have a video on that already as well as a couple of others in the skiller um, playlist so this fall is two months right now so what we want to do is we want to get to six months and then what we want to do is we want to put it into a 60 EEC and as I've said in those previous videos the reason you want 60 EEC is because that gives you the best possible lesson so I'm just going to double check that my EC is in fact 60 so if I look at the mission earnings, it is 60 for this EC. So let's go back and we'll just box that full. So the reason that 60 E lessons are so important is because lessons are what up the skills that your horse can potentially have. So this is why it's so important. Now full games, and if you want to know how to, how to do full games, I have a video on that. Full games are the next thing with skilling. Um, you want to make sure that you get all 60 skills from full games. So that's what we're going to worry about now between 8 months and a year and 4 months. So I'm trying to get as much done in terms of play as possible to get this full all of those skills because we don't want to miss any of those. Now I just kind of do them from memory and I sometimes change it a little bit but if you're not sure on them definitely go and uh, practice. If, if you have never properly done full games before practice on some folds that aren't skillers because you can still gain 60 full games from those just until you're absolutely sure and you know exactly how to do it because you don't want to lose all of those skills. So the full is one year and two months now, so we've just, it's one year and four now, so this is the last time we can gain any more skills from doing play with it. So if we hover over this, you can see it takes energy away now, but it won't actually give us any skills, so that means that full games is done. Now if you have VIP or Pegasus account, you can usually view the details, and we can see here that we have got all the games done correctly, so those are the 60 skills from full games. Now, the full is one year and four months. So that is that done. Now the next thing is you want a nix packet. Now the reason I advise nix packing at this age is because at one year and six months um, it saves you agent points. Now if you don't want to use a nix pack, okay, um, you can use these items separately. The reason I go for the next pack is for two reasons. One, I get it from my Belios, and secondly, if I was to get these separately, that's three passes, three passes, two passes. So there's um, six and eight, and then another pass for that. So that is a lot. That's nine passes when you can get this for um, the six. So we're gonna use the in-stock next packs that I have. So that's now on the horse. So now one of the other things to do is to geld your skiller. Now mostly uh, if you're breeding your own you're going to need to geld it yourself and the reason you geld it is because you want the gelding bonus. Now I have a VIP perk which allows me to geld at one year and six months but you can geld at two years and six months if you don't have that perk. So we're just going to castrate it here. So by castrating this horse I actually get a bonus so if I just refresh the page. I get a bonus from gelding it and that is plus 8 stamina, plus 8 speed and plus 4 in dressage. And that can basically be the make or break between winning uh, a Grand Prix event or winning a rosette and not winning one. So that's why it's so key to have it and I very 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 rarely ever do. I, I, I've, as far as I can remember I haven't skilled a horse that hasn't been a gelding in years. So I always make sure they geld it. And if you're buying off um, a team generally they're not going to give you an old gelded one so don't ask because as far as they're concerned they're protecting their own uh, breeding lines. So what I'm going to start off with is I'm going to do forest rides first uh, because I'm currently in a forest DC so because this horse isn't two years yet we'll just quickly do that until we get to two years old and then I'll show you what we'll do next from then. So it's one year and eight months now and two years old is the next, sort of the biggest uh, stepping part from this because this is whenever you want to add the water of youth. And when that water of youth goes on, it's whenever you have to be very acutely aware of how much 
um, energy you're using and so forth because you want to make sure that you're lessening it, less, giving it lessons and missions every single day to gain as many skills as possible. So we'll just age it one more time and it's now two years old. So at two years old we want to put the water of youth on. I don't think I have one in, in stock so I'm going to go quickly see if I can get one from the exchanges. Um, water of youth. There we go. Okay, so there's quite a few exchanges there. Um, I think we'll go with this, so that we have those. Okay, so now we can put the Water of Youth on. So we're two years old, and this is very, very, very key. This is exceptionally important. The Water of Youth needs to go on. So we'll put the Water of Youth on. And now this means that we can do twice as many lessons. Twice as many lessons mean twice as many skills. So if we just hover over the missions here, you can see the earnings it says is 60 and the dressage, it, it adds on to two skills. And it's giving me 0 0.25, which gives me 0 0.5 um, overall each time I lessen it, okay? Or do a mission with it. And if it wasn't 60E, it would be less. I'd be in less skills. So you want to make sure if you're going to spend the time, the effort, the passes, the items on doing a skiller, you really want to try and make sure you get 60 EEC. Now you might have to ask around, you might have to, you know, ask a lot of people. Some people will just say no. Some people will say on their pages if they don't um, allow other people to use them and so forth. Um, it's just that some people don't like other players using their EC. Um, I don't generally mind people using my own my EC uh, because I have a spring divine which allows me to let people f to board for one day so it doesn't affect my lessons so I could have let anybody board in my EC and it wouldn't affect my lessons and that's why I don't mind it but some people don't even with that. Um, some people just don't have the boxes so it's kind of one of those things but I think if you're going to do a skiller get, th get that 60 e box from somewhere so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel the step. You don't have to do this step, okay? I'm just doing this because I have another EC, which is 60, which is mountain, which is just going to let me finish mountain rides just a little bit faster. So as I said, that's how you can check if you go on the EC page and see. And there's also something else, actually. I'll quickly go back. The other reason I want to put this horse in this EC is this, the bonus. Right, this is what I want to talk about for a minute because this is one of the changes, one of the big changes. Now, in previous videos, I remember whenever um, UK, the highest bonus she could have was plus 10 in EC. Then eventually it went crept up to plus 11 and then it crept up to 12 and 12 is the most she could have. Then what happened was the updates, all these big, big changes with staff and stuff. And suddenly you could have plus 20. Now you can have plus 40. So if I quickly just click on employees, it's the vet that we're interested in for this particular um, explanation. So the VAT is an employee who works in your question center. While they are employed, the skill bonus given by your question center is increased by 50%. Now, so that means if you had it plus 20, if you'd maxed it out and then you got the VAT, that would make it 30. But the reason it suddenly becomes 40, and this is what I'm gonna show you now, is this. So if you are if, if you come across an EC that has an export diploma, this doubles the bonuses given by all the staff. So suddenly the expert vet is gonna give um another 10, so then you've got the 40. So this is why this is kind of a big deal. A plus 40 bonus is a huge, huge bonus and it will make it makes a significant difference with skillers and this is why I want to use this kind of EC for the horse. So if we go into reserved boxes here, I'm just going to quickly box this. So now the horse is in an EC with a plus 40 bonus in every single skill. That's a big, big bonus and it's definitely something. If you can find a 60 EC with a plus 40 bonus and you can get access to that box, that's, you know, that is a big difference it makes a big difference compared to some things like just basic tack items you know that don't give us so don't give us such a large bonus compa in comparison now I have got everything here except the um, I haven't got the horseshoe studs but we'll worry about that in a moment I'm just going to do something quickly with, with this horse before. You would have seen in my previous videos that I just do all the rides, then I do all the training, do all the competitions. I'm going to do this this horse slightly different. There's a reason for that. Because I want this horse, this horse is genetically best in dressage, okay? But I actually want it 
to have its bonus in gallop because I want to put this horse into a specific type of competition where gallop is the primary skill. So I'm going to scale this horse slightly different, but um, this is only... I suppose this is a good explanation to show you if you're somebody who has taken a particular breed of horse and you want it to actually be slightly better in a different skill, um, and you will come across some horses like this, you want them to be better in a different skill because whenever you put the horseshoe stud bonus on, whatever skill your horse is highest in at the time you put that that horseshoe stud bonus on is going, that's where it's going to go. Okay, that's where that bonus is going to go. If I had put the horseshoe stud bonus on this horse a couple of minutes ago when dressage was highest, it would be a plus 12 dressage bonus. But because I'm now increasing um, gallop instead, it's going to go in gallop. So we're just going to keep doing this. We're going to keep doing lessons, as I said, and just keep slowly training this horse up in gallop because this is the key part right now for me. It's because I want all of the main bonuses on gallop. So we're going to do this this way. And the other reason it's going to be important, and I'll show you very soon why that is, but if you're just doing a straight edge skiller, that the skiller you want it to be highest in whatever it already is highest in, then have a look at my previous videos because then I'm not sort of going off on a tangent so much with it. So. To be honest, if you watch my older previous, older videos on scaling they and this, you'll get a very, I think, a well-rounded idea of how to scale correctly and so forth. Right, so this horse is two um, years and five months. So what I'm going to do just quickly is I'm going to start doing mountain rides as well. So this forest rides are finished. We don't need to worry about those. I'm not going to train anything else skill-wise for a couple of minutes. I just want to finish mountain rides. And then what we will do is we'll look at beach rides. Because skillers, unlike blops, where blops you don't need to do beach rides because beach, beach rides aren't the same as forest and mountain. Because they transfer skills, they don't add skills. And if you're wondering if you can move them to more than one skill, yes you can. It doesn't have to be the same skill, but there is a limit on it, so you can't move all of the skills. It is maxed out to a degree. So we're almost done in mountain. I will skip some of the things later. I will sh tell you exactly what I'm doing and and why and so forth, but there will be, I will cut out bits of this later because otherwise this could be a 40 minute video. So I'm just gonna finish mountain. We should almost be there. I think we should be close to finishing mountain now. Yeah, I think just a couple more rides and we will have finished that. So this horse is three years old now, so we'll just finish that. And that should be mountain completely done now. Yep, okay, so mountain rides are done, forest rides are done. Uh, you can't touch beach until five years old, so I'm going to pause the video there. I'm actually just going to age this horse, but doing lessons every single day. Don't forget the lessons at any point. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not going to do training. I'm not going to do taunt competitions, so I'll be back in a little minute. Okay, so I'm back. Um, at five years old, as I mentioned earlier, you can start doing beach rides. Now, I have done most of them already, but when you open beach rides, okay, what it does is skill to improve, so that basically it adds skills to whatever skill you choose, and you can pick which one you want, and you can actually put them in different, you can put skills in various ones and take skills away from various ones, um, up to a certain amount, and then you have a skill to decrease, so this is the skill that it takes away skill points from, so I could click jumping and it might take away from trot, or you click stamina, it would take away from stamina, and adds jumping. But because this horse is best in gallop right now, and it's worst as trot, so if I just refresh this again, um, it will automatically default to gallop and trot. So we're going to finish this off, and we just click that. So now if we click it, it says that the horse doesn't have any skills to transfer anymore. So what I'm going to do now is what I usually do, and I kind of forgot about this, was as I said before, it's my traffic light lesson lesson. I don't have a layer right now, so I can't put it on, but um, I usually do... Um, red, amber and green and it's to try and help me remember the lesson because I have a really bad habit of forgetting. So once you have done the beach rides, the mountain rides, the forest rides, and remember you need to do forest and mountain rides before you do beach, 
and you've put the skills in the place that you want them to go. So I have made sure that I have put the skills all into Gallop because that's where I want them. Now the next thing to do is I'm going to add the bonuses. Now you can add, a, you can use a bonus pack to do this. I'm just going to add them individually. So I'll add the whip, the bell boots, the spurs and the lunge. And then what we need to do, and this is the one that was so important, was the last bonus which is the horseshoe studs. Now I don't have enough equus to buy this right now so I'm going to go and sell stuff at the shop quickly so that I can get this. So we'll sell 30,000 worth of stuff and quickly buy this bonus. So this bonus is so important because whenever you put it on is key basically. Uh, I have put it on at the wrong time before so let's click on bonus here and give the bonus. So we'll click that add and as you can see that went to Gallop and that's because Gallop is the highest skill right now. If dressage had been the highest it would have gone to dressage and so forth. So that is that on. So those are the, the all of those things I need on that for the moment. There are lots of other things that we could add for the moment. What I am going to do is I'm going to put the piece of cloud pack on. So now you can use individual clouds. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But if you have a Pegasus or VIP, you can add the cloud pack. And the reason I think the cloud pack is quite nice is because you can put um, 20 passes worth of clouds on for five passes, which is much better. Um, but you can save them up and do that too. I mean, there's been times that I've saved up 20 individual pieces of cloud and then I put those on. So every time we use one of those, it will make the horse younger. And you might be wondering, well, what's the point of this? It means you can do more lessons because you're making the horse younger again, so you can do more and more lessons. So we'll just use that again. Now, if your horse goes under five, it will stop allowing you to add, the, because you can only add this from five years onwards. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start training all of these skills. And now it doesn't matter what way I've done them. I'm just going to finish all the training and the training is exceptionally easy, but I'm still going to do the lesson in the morning and then do the training. And I'm going to train all of the skills because, as I've said before, with a skiller, you have to bold everything. Everything has to be maxed out as far as you can make it. So I will pause there and I'll be back shortly. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, I have got all the training done, as you can see here. So with the skiller obviously just to cover a couple of things that we started off with making sure that it was born from honorable parents with tears or arrow packs so you get the best possible inborn skills making sure you got all 60 skills from full games then putting the water of youth on at two years old lessening every single day and then obviously we wanted to get the horseshoe studs on a particular skill so we wanted to make sure that skill was highest when we added it so for us that was gallop we also made sure that we beached um, those particular skills to gallop as well because I want gallop to have the most the highest bonus on it so if we just quickly click on the skills here we can see that all the skills from trot were taken and added to gallop well not all the skills but a percentage amount of that now you will also notice here that I have sort of done most of the competitions I will show you now so if we just quickly go to my page here so if you if you've seen my first skilling video, I did Western with that one, and the second one I did Classical, but I'm just quickly going to go down here, so if we can find this. So with the Classical, um, what you want to be doing, you don't have to do all the competition types. You can just do three or two, for example, for some of these. So the Classical ones, we want to bold all these skills, so we need to make sure that we do a combination that covers all those skills, that ticks all the boxes, basically. Now, because I'm doing Western with this horse, I am going to do Barrel and I'm going to do Trail. And the reason is, is Barrel does Stamina, Speed and Gallop. And then for the empty boxes, Trail does Dressage, Trot and Jump. So that's what I've been doing with this horse. So we're just going to finish off Trail. As you can see, if we hover over it, you see that it adds to Trot dressage and jumping so if we click on that and we'll click that again so now that's bolded those three skills because we've done all the rides and the training and all the competitions for those particular three skills now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same for barrel and now barrel has bolded the last ones so the horse is now completely bolded it's got all the gains from rides all the gains from training and competitions so this means that all of this is done and also beach is done so all these bits are done now the last thing we have to do is the missions of the lessons. Now this is one where we're going to get quite, we've still got a lot of skills to get. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a technique which I would have shown you in my previous videos. But do not do this technique unless your horse has a philosopher's stone. So if your horse does not have this item, don't attempt to do this. So what I'm literally going to do is I'm going to age it and lessen it. 
agent and lessen it because lessons aren't affected by what's called the health penalty so if you trained if you did training rides or competitions when your horse didn't have 100 percent health you get this uh, health penalty which basically takes skills you lose skills they're, they're taken away from your horse and you can never get them back and this isn't good with skillers because you want skillers to reach their maximum potential so you don't want to be losing any skills anywhere so missions don't have this penalty the health penalty doesn't apply to missions so you can do missions when your horse doesn't have 100% um, health so the reason I'm doing this is because this is just faster and I tend to do this once everything's bolded and don't try to don't try to do it before your horse is bolded make sure that everything's done um, because you don't want to risk ruining a skiller after you've spent so much time and so much effort on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop there. I'm going to continue to lessen and age, lessen and age until this horse is 23 or 3 years old and then I'll come back. I'm also going to finish using the last pieces of cloud. You want to make sure that you use all the pieces of cloud before the horse is 25 um, because after 25 they're no benefit because you can't get lessen, you can't get gains from lessons after 25 so that's why you want to use those beforehand. So I'll pause it there and I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm back. I have been just aging and lessening every single day, making sure to do those. So the horse is now 23 years old. So at 23, I like to start looking after them again, so starting to feed them up, because at this point they're extremely low in weight. As you can see, he's 20 kilos at the moment. Horses are supposed to weigh that little. So we'll start feeding them up, and we'll not worry about giving them health mass just yet. We want to wait until we start to see this. So we'll just keep doing the lessons now and keep... Um, feeding and aging until he gets to 25 and then we will have eventually got all the skills from all the lessons that we can possibly get so he's almost 24 now and then after that what we'll do is we'll start adding the rest of the bonuses um, picking a GA coat and so forth now those things are more to do with increasing bonuses because you can have a really high skilled horse but to have the bonuses obviously makes a big difference when it comes to the GP and so forth because obviously a horse with lower skills could beat you if it has bonuses that make it higher in skills so it's 24 years old now so we're almost there he's still underweight but as you can see he's gained a lot of weight since um, he originally had 20 kilos so we'll keep feeding and now that it's, uh, it's not asking me to feed up to 20 I'll start to give it a mash as well as you can see the health is starting to improve now at, at 24 years old so we'll keep giving a mash just to quick and how quickly it takes to get to 100% health and obviously the reason you want to have 100% health before you try to get rosettes or enter the Grand Prix or competitions in general is because if your horse isn't 100% health your horse is going to perform badly the same thing as having low morale as well uh, because that is going to detract from how your horse performs when it goes into competitions. So we're almost there now, we're almost at 25. And keep giving it mash. And obviously there will be some other bonuses that you can add at the very end, such as grace from um, entering lessons or missions. Um, we'll add on an extra bonus but it's a temporary bonus just like the follow bella if you want to follow bella and you manage to get that bonus um, and mentioning those I probably should also you know sort of say that if you do get those bonuses they are temporary but you know you need to make sure you've got them in the right discipline so that's why I'm entering and reigning at the minute because I'm trying to get the reigning follow bella because depending on what competition you're entering it's going to give you a different follow bella so it's 25 now we're going to do the very last lesson as you can see click that and now what we're going to do is you can see just found the tub of grease so this is a temporary this item gives stamina and speed bonus for several days now this doesn't mean days as in real time days this means as in how many times you age the horse so if you age the horse forward eventually you're going to lose that so you can see that I added um, the posted and pack on earlier which gives several bonuses as well we will add a few more things here as onto this horse so we'll add Medusa's blood because this gives a bonus actually I might have to wait until I get some out of the shop um, but you can then do more reigning competitions so I'll see if I can get any more bonuses if I can get the follow bella bonus I don't think we're going to get it but I'll give it a try 
Okay. So I haven't got the Falabella bonus yet, but I will have to get that before I enter the Grand Prix. If you want to know more about Falabella bonuses, there's a video on that already. So just to recap, we all got all the full games, 60 skills. We applied the Water of Youth at two years old. We did all the rides, the training competitions. We did the rides on the beach and we did that to the specific skill that we wanted the skills on. We did all the missions and we've actually managed to get all of the gains. If you do 60 E lessons um, with a horse from 2 years old to 25 using 20 pieces of cloud in a 60 E C, you get 178.50 skills. So we haven't for once missed any lessons. Amazing. Right. Um, if you don't know how, if you don't have the ability to view the details, you can do this manually. So what you would do is take note of the innate skills. You would add the full games on, so add the 60 skills. Then you obviously add on the genetic potential of the horse. And then what you do is you add on 178.5 per ride. And you, obviously you meet the criteria for that. And that actually will give you this number, which is displayed here as well. So that is how you add up all of that um, to end up with the total skills of your horse, just if you want to double check to see if it's done correctly. So what we'll do there is I'll just pause for a minute. Okay, so I added, just a moment ago, I added on the Aquarius Fortune and the Polidius Parchment. I'm now going to give the Medusa's Blood to the horse as well. So we've got the wings, which gives us a bonus, as you can see here. For being a Pegasus, and then what we will do is we will add a coat because obviously this is one of the most important parts. Um, hmm. See, this is always the tricky bit: is which coat to pick. This is my dilemma, at least. I quite like that one, except it's not limited. And I don't like using ones that aren't limited, so we'll switch to limited coats here. Let's see what we have. Hmm. I should really just pick one, shouldn't I? But it's not as easy as that. Right, I'm going to go for this one. So we've got the coat on, so that'll give us another bonus there, you'll see. The bonus from the Golden Atwell. You can put a um, fifth element on if you want it instead. Obviously it, it has the added benefit of giving you some extra bonuses. If you want to check out what sort of bonuses you can get, you can get these. You can have a look into the bonuses I had, you know, area there of the black market, which will give you a rough idea of what bonuses you can add and so forth. Now I've come in here to look for the Halo Sarai, so let's get the Halo Sarai and find the horse. Let's put it on as well. Okay. The Halo Sarai obviously has the, the ability to make sure your horse always has 100% morale, which is very useful um, when it comes to competitions and so forth. So, let's see, I mean, this is mostly the basics covered, I mean, it does take a few tries at this, but I think if you prepare yourself and you know your basic stuff well enough that whenever you go to do this, it's much, much easier. Sort of like this one, I think. Okay, we'll go with that one, so I'll use the one from inventory. There we go. And apply that. Obviously, Halo's Ray, or sorry, not the Halo's Ray, the Paul's Lear is one of those purely cosmetic things that makes no odds to this, but just looking at the bonuses, we've got the Top of Grease, but we still haven't got the Fallow Bell. I'm going to try and get that before the GP. Um, but mostly, the thing to start off with, if you can get your horse skilled correctly, you will learn about the bonuses. Um, I have had occasions where I've skilled correctly and I've missed a bonus or I have entered with the wrong fellow ballot in the past and it just, you just have to um, try um, a few times and eventually you will get that and you will get there. So that is how you uh, skill properly. Um, obviously it is a lot cheaper if you save the stuff up and add it because then you can skill for very little. It's very costly if you're having to spend all the items from your own passes to do it. Um, so it's much easier if you save up and do skillers periodically um, rather than doing them every week. But if you're somebody that's very very competitive with the GP you usually have to skill every week. Um, sometimes 
uh, a little bit less than that, but it just depends your server, because some servers move more efficiently when it comes to scholars than others. So, as I've said, this isn't completely finished because I still have to get the Falabella bonus on this and check that I have all the bonuses on this horse correctly and so forth. I mean, I did mention before that, you know, all I wanted all the um, horseshoe stud bonus in the gallop because this horse is going into a competition worth um, gallop is its primary skill. So if you don't know anything about primary, you need um, primary and secondary skills, go look at my competition videos and that will explain why. But um, thank you to Ellie Cooper for requesting the video and hope you love it. Bye!